Even if an angel appeared and spoke with you for one hour, the fast for God will still remain. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil and perplexity by the roaring seas and strange tides or tsunamis. Japanese is tsunami. People will be terrified what they see coming upon the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. What they call the depletion of the ozone layer. Those scientific names came recently, but they were here in the Bible. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So when you see these things begin to happen, stand and look up. For your salvation is near. Look at verse 29 now. I'm not through yet. <laughs> Glory to God. Then he gave them an illustration. He said, notice the fig tree, which is a type of Israel, and other trees, which means other nations which were never nations occupied by colonial powers or by armies of aliens. When the leaves come out, you know without being told that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation, which one? The one that will see these things happen. Not the generation of his day. Uh -uh. The generation that will see these things happen shall not pass away from the scene until all these things have been taken. Heaven and earth shall disappear, but my words will never disappear. Praise his name. If anyone has got an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church, let him please be seated. Can we know when Jesus is coming? Yes. But men of God, we have been told no, we will never know. It's because ignorance is a big disease. Can only be replaced, not be cured. Ignorance can't be cured. It can be replaced by knowledge. Now you say wars, rumors of wars, nations fighting against nations, kingdoms. We are told that there have been wars and Earthquakes ever since time immemorial, I agree with you. So what's the strange thing about them happening now? The amazing thing between now and then that you have read about in history is that they have never happened as frequent as now. And they have never happened with immensity. The volume, the destruction is fearful. It makes nations shake. One thing that will make you want to be happy that Jesus is coming soon is the phenomena of fear. Say fear. fear. This is not the fear that people will kill me tomorrow, no. Scientists, the people we depend upon, people who regulate our lives, people who decide whether we breathe or not, People decide whether we be alive or die. There are people who decide either to wipe us out of existence or to let us exist. 
There are enough weapons on earth to wipe every living thing, every breathing thing, plus you, plus animals, plus insects, plus the fish of the sea. There's enough stockpile of weapons to eliminate every life, every breath on earth today. We are only alive because we have been allowed to live. Otherwise, they can just press a button and they don't have to fly here. They are so sophisticated, they just determine how far Kenya is from here and they program their thing and it flies and never stops until Nairobi. Precise hour, precise time and say Nairobi wiped out. Like a joke. We are only alive because there is a thing called United Nations which debates whether people should be eliminated or not. But when it comes to eliminating life, it is decided, it's finished. It's over. And because of this, people are afraid of each other. Someone may get mad, angry, get insane, and press the wrong button. And we are gone. Because of this, plus the natural phenomena that nobody can control, natural Phenomena that nobody can control. Today, when you hear of Kyoto Agreement, when nations go to Japan, a city called Kyoto, to agree if they should stop spoiling the atmosphere with their gases from their industries, and they say, no, we won't because we must manufacture. We have to manufacture our things. We have to live our citizens must live well. At what expense? At other nations dying naturally. Because they have destroyed even the oxygen you breathe. They, you don't know what's in the air. There are enough chemicals to finish you. And the unborn children. They got to debate who should do what? And hear me. Man being man. And being a small God to himself. Nobody can dictate to him what to do. They want to be left alone to run the world as they wish. Others are afraid of the natural phenomena like waves, tsunamis, like the one that hit Indonesia and it killed so many and nobody can stop it. There is no scientific way on how to stop it. I was in Japan that time when the tsunami came. I was preaching in Japan. Seven cities. I was on the second floor of a hotel in Hokkaido up north at the border of, of Japan and Russia. They told me that's Russia. Namboile, that's Russia. And believe you me, the building was going like a tree in the wind. A 12-story building was going like a tree in the wind. I don't know how I found myself on the floor from the second floor. I found myself downstairs. I don't know how it happened. Because you can't go on a lift there's no electricity. The leaves don't go. You are told, run. You escape for your life. Miraculously, you close your eyes and say, I hope the building does not fall on me. And you pray the last prayer. That time you see a widow in Kenya, Mrs. Kayo, and children without a father, and grandchildren and the unborn ones. Here, a grandfather who was a preacher caught dead in Japan. They may never even see my body. I found myself outside with thousands of others. People bruised, cut, flying missiles, debris flying, stones flying in the air. 
These buses you see, like the Kenya buses, the, the large buses, you see it floating on the water like paper. Waves have come in. I think like Mombasa Island will be swallowed up in a few minutes. Minutes, not hours, minutes. Because the waves bow as far as many feet high. You see it coming like a 